So the next step is uh, going to be looking at it in combination. And there are a number of um, studies that are ongoing now in a, a very rich uh, portfolio of uh, investigator-initiated clinical trials looking at it, uh, uh, looking at it in combination with novel anti-CD20, potentially looking at it with um, other novel agents like PD-1, looking at it with uh, BTK inhibitors. So there's a, a rich uh, interest in trying to explore all of those um, uh, novel mechanisms of action with these types of drugs in the hope of trying to develop something that's less chemotherapy predicated for these patients. I will note that uh, George Dang uh, from uh, our center at uh, Columbia has an oral talk on Monday where he's actually been delving into a lot of the molecular pharmacology of these particular drugs. And he's made some pretty interesting observations over the course of the last year, which is that um, these pathways tend to control a whole variety of other oncogenes, including uh, CMYK, uh, cyclin D3, BCL2, heat shock proteins. And there's a lot of literature really documenting the importance of these particular oncogenes in uh, cancer. But what he has uh, done is really try to develop a strategy to turn off MYK and BCL2. And uh, it turns out that the TGR1202 uh, molecule seems to have some very, very unique properties and capabilities in its ability to turn off MYC and lower BCL2. And uh, it may relate to the finding that this compound has um, a slightly better activity in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, though it may be a bit early to proclaim that because it's only a small number of patients. But what George has found is that combinations of uh, TGR1202 with proteasome inhibitors. Proteasome inhibitors have very interesting effects on free amino acid pools, which govern uh, the activity of uh, mTORC1 and mTORC2, which have very important impact on downstream translational complexes. Um, he has found that the combination of proteasome inhibitors and PI3 kinase inhibitor, in particular carfilzomib and TGR1202, are very potently synergistic and completely turn off MYC expression in about six hours. And so that could be a pretty important finding because targeting MYC has been one of those holy grails in cancer for a long time, but it's been difficult to target MYC because it's not exactly a protein that's amenable to direct small molecule uh, drug discovery around. It's proven not to be very druggable. So finding strategies that might uh, impair the ability of a cancer cell to translate uh, messenger RNA into MYC protein where it then wreaks its havoc is a unique approach. And uh, he's now in the midst of uh, doing experiments to see if we can't use his novel combination strategies to turn off MYC and double hit lymphomas, a huge area of unmet need in uh, in uh, malignant hematology, and uh, then coming in with chemotherapy. So it's a very interesting strategy because MYC not only contributing to a fast, high proliferative rate of the tumor cell makes those tumor cells very, very chemotherapy resistant. So a strategy that could turn it off in six hours may allow one to come in with a chemotherapy approach that could overcome some of that intrinsic drug resistance related to MYC in double hit lymphoma. So that's something that he'll be actively uh, following up on uh, in the months to come.